The Biligiri Rangana Tiger Reserve in Karnataka remains relatively unfamiliar to many Keralites. This area stands out for its diverse landscape, encompassing dry forests, evergreen forests, as well as swamps and marshes. It is a very special kind of forest. Here, we also enjoyed excellent wildlife sightings, while encountering numerous large and small animals which was exciting. The highlight of our forest safari was undoubtedly the birds. With the mix of fascinating birds and animals, this story promises an amazing adventure. So let's begin our journey. Since many of you may not be familiar with this forest, let me provide you with some basic information. In Karnataka, take the Gudalur Mysore route and after reaching Bundalpet, take a ride and travel for about 60 kilometers through Chamrajnagar to reach the Biligiri Rangana Swami Kshetra Tiger Reserve, also known as the BRT Tiger Reserve. For motorcycle enthusiasts, bikes are permitted to travel through this route too. Now, we are journeying through this dry forest towards the JLR Safari Resort, which is managed by the government. We have finally arrived at the Kegudi JLR Resort. This is the main office of the resort. There is a convenient car parking facility nearby. I felt a sense of satisfaction about reaching here. There is a notice board displaying updates about the recent tiger sightings over the past week. They have had numerous leopard sightings, tiger sightings, as well as wild dog sightings which adds to the excitement. After completing the check-in procedures, we made our way to our standard lavish room. The package also includes lunch on the day of check-in, so after enjoying a delicious and satisfying meal, we are ready to embark on a safari adventure. Our designated driver for the day is Mr. Nagesh. Both morning and evening safaris span two and a half hours each. The safari center managed by the forest department is situated close to the JLR. Upon arrival, we are required to provide our details and may also need to pay charges if we are carrying the camera. As we venture into the forest, our first sighting of the day is a crested hawk eagle, a species predominantly found in the forested areas. This video contains plenty of bird chirping and natural sounds, so it's a good idea to use headphones for the best experience. These eagles primarily prey on creatures such as rats and squirrels with the crest atop their heads being a distinctive feature. Let's be mindful not to disturb the eagle and proceed with our safari. On the left side of the road, we notice a tribal settlement. Ahead, there's a pond. Such ponds are prime spots for observing birds and animals, especially during the summer when they seek water to quench their thirst. Look, there's a sambar deer by the pond, unfortunately, wounded near its neck. Additionally, a serpent eagle perches on a nearby tree branch. These eagles are not only found in the forests, but also in the areas inhabited by people. We have already spotted two different types of eagles. I have taken care to include the natural sounds of the forest this time. So another notable feature of this forest is its diverse terrain, encompassing four distinct types. Currently we are passing through a dry forest. Well, there is an evergreen forest in the other section, along with a semi-evergreen forest. Though our safari route doesn't cover the evergreen forest, we will traverse through the semi-evergreen portion. Once again, 
We come across a pond and upon approaching it, we find the path dry while the area surrounding the pond is lush with greenery, presenting a beautiful sight. All green trees extend into the pond, hosting three to four turtles on a fallen tree. This forest is renowned for its diverse wildlife sightings, including tigers, leopards, wild dogs, sloth bears, elephants and various types of deers. Notably, there's a rare species known as the honey badger, seldom seen in our native areas. Small birds are taking bath in the river, seeking relief from the sunny, sweltering temperature. As mentioned earlier, this forest boasts both drylands and evergreen forests due to its location between the Eastern Ghats and the Western Ghats. In comparison to Bandipur and Nagarhole, this area features more mountain terrains nearby. Consequently, the Satyamangalam area to the left is arid, while the region between these mountains is semi-evergreen. Initially declared a wildlife sanctuary in 1974, it was later designated as a tiger reserve in 2011. In the 2018 tiger census, 64 tigers were recorded in this forest, but the recent 2023 census shows a decrease to 37 tigers. However, this decline doesn't necessarily imply tiger deaths. They may have migrated deeper into unexplored areas of the forest or towards the forests on Satyamangalam side. Our driver informed us that the area we're heading towards is a home to four tigers who have marked their territory. We observed a blue kingfisher devouring a fish it caught from the pond, demonstrating its hunting prowess. Mm. Meanwhile, a male sambadir adorned with antlers approached the pond. Presumably thirsty due to the afternoon heat. However, as we focused on the deer, the kingfisher swiftly consumed its prey. We also had a fortune of spotting a blue caped rock thrush, a rarely seen migrating bird known to visit Kerala during the winters. As we pressed on in hopes of spotting big cats, we appreciated our driver's expertise gained from 19 years of working in the forest. He's adept at spotting even a faint pug marks of big cats while driving his jeep. Suddenly, we halted upon hearing alarm calls from wild squirrels and langurs. Although initially unsuccessful in locating them, we were thrilled to spot a leopard by the side of an anthill. Despite being a fair distance away, we could estimate its age to be around 6 to 7 years. Unlike tigers, leopards are typically more shy around tourists and tend to retreat into forest upon spotting safari jeeps. The leopard remained hidden behind the anthill, possibly resting after its afternoon hunt and meal. Compared to tigers, leopards are about half their size and generally more elusive.
they'd fiercely defend their territories from other leopards. We waited patiently, hoping for the leopard would eventually move, but it seemed content to rest. Despite our desire to capture the moment when it would rise and walk, our driver advised that it might not happen for another half an hour, prompting us to continue our safari. Spotting the leopard injected energy and excitement into our safari as leopards are notoriously difficult to sight, while tigers are more easily spotted. The thrill of encountering a leopard was unparalleled. We then came across a female paradise flycatcher with its striking black shaded head. As the sun's intensity diminished, we continued a safari in anticipation of more animal sightings. As we transitioned from dry, forested areas to lush greenery with tall trees, the beauty of the forest intensified. Among the greenery, we spotted a brown fish owl, perfectly camouflaged against the tree. Its piercing gaze sent shivers down our spines, a reminder of its nocturnal hunting habits. These owls primarily feed on fish during the night, utilizing their exceptional night vision. As we continued our journey, we approached a pond where we were fortunate to witness an eagle quenching its thirst. It's uncommon to see eagles on the ground, indicating their dire need for water. Interestingly, we had spotted the same species earlier in the morning. Among the grasses near the pond, we noticed two striped-necked mongooses, a common sight in the South Indian forests, particularly near water bodies like this one. Our evening safari, spanning from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., had already surpassed its designated time as it was now past 5 p.m. Along the way, we encountered a wild gaur, notable for its muscular build. These gaurs, along with the deer, constitute the primary prey for tigers in this reserve, although deer populations are comparatively lower in this forest. Continuing our journey, we spotted an elephant amidst the grasses leisurely munching on green leaves. Initially, we only noticed one adult elephant. Later, another adult elephant joined them. Unlike those found in dry forest areas, these elephants were noticeably larger in size. We watched the sight of the elephants for a while longer before deciding to proceed back to the resort before the nightfall. Marking the end of our safari. Despite the safari's conclusion for the day, our spirits remained high, especially since we had the early fortune of spotting a leopard. As we embark on our morning safari at 6 a.m., 
the gentle sunlight begins to illuminate our surroundings. Mr. Nagis drives his jeep cautiously, keeping an eye out for the telltale signs of Big Cat's presence. Morning hours present prime opportunities for spotting tigers as they typically mark their territories during this time. After about half an hour of travel, we spot a sambar deer peacefully grazing nearby. Take a moment to listen to the shooting chirping of birds in the background. It's a refreshing accompaniment to our journey. Our safari vehicle had stopped right on the side where the sambar deer was walking. But without any fear, it walked in front of us and slipped slowly into the forest. Then right next to it, a male grey jungle fowl was walking in search of food. Its long pointed sword-like tail has an amazing attraction. There is a possibility of a female jungle fowl being nearby. Despite it being February, the morning air feels unexpectedly chilling, catching me off guard without a sweater or a jacket. The open jeep ride through the trees intensifies the cold prompting or shiver. It's advisable to carry masks that offer full face coverage, especially in the dusty areas. Spotting three striped-necked mongooses, which we observed from a distance yesterday, now it is much closer. Morning safaris seems to bring out the liveliness and enthusiasm in most animals. The symphony of birds chirping fills the air everywhere we go in the forest. While animal sightings do occur during the afternoon, they are often driven by thirst or hunger. The early morning safaris offer spectacular views of sunrise with rays piercing through the trees, casting enchanting shadows. No matter where we roam in the forest, we are treated to such captivating morning visuals. After an hour's journey, we arrive at a tranquil pond where we spot two wild boars grazing peacefully. First atop one of the boars, we notice birds including the beautiful paradise flycatcher. A male this time, in contrast to the brown colored female as we saw yesterday. Witnessing the flycatcher gracefully plunge into the water, its long tail adding to its allure is truly captivating and beautiful. The intermittent noise we hear is that of a white-breasted water hen, commonly found near water bodies, even in our native areas. The forest's beauty and ambience leave a lasting impression, providing a refreshing escape. While not as vast as Nanachi, one of the South India's most beloved forests, this forest's abundance of wildlife sightings brings immense joy. The forest's allure extends beyond the summer, offering the promise of even greater beauty during the rainy seasons. The owl we spotted yesterday still perches on its branch, occasionally provoking the ire of other birds, as owls are known to raid nests at night.
While proceeding further, we encountered a bird known as the brown shrike. Its camouflage with a brown tree and its brown color makes it challenging to spot it out from the tree. Small birds and creatures like these often go unnoticed during safaris. Additionally, there are three spotted deer in the vicinity. Although this forest does have spotted deer, they are quite less in number and are rarely seen in large groups. Among them, there is a young fawn accompanied by two adult deer. Their sightings, such as spotted deer and its fawn, delight us as we continue our journey. Mr. Nagesh's keen eye ensures we don't miss any bird sightings, such as the black hooded oriole, known for its loyalty to its habitat. It does not roam or migrate to places. It prefers to stay in the place it belongs. Encountering wild goats as we press forward, we are reminded that the morning birds remain our primary focus. With reluctance, we decide to head back to the resort and check out, eager to return for another forest adventure. So until next time, farewell.